Last year, I managed to get six-figure profits using a process called print-on-demand. It's a process where you create a design and then put it on a blank image of a product and then list it on a website like Etsy. Then when a listing gets sales, you connect that order to a production partner on Printify and they take care of producing and shipping the item. And we as the sellers, we don't even touch the item at all. So in this video, I'll go over the whole process from research to design, which mockups to use, to having a great offer, and lastly, how to get rank on your listings. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing is knowing what to sell. So the first thing that we gotta do is head to Etsy. Etsy is mainly a platform for gifting women with gifts. So that's their whole marketing uh, done in a simple sentence. So if we just search gifts for women, let's see here. Now I live in Sweden, so I gotta filter stuff out. Otherwise the uh, results get skewed since my target market is in the US. So let's see here. I used a Cassie Johnson hack by applying a star seller filter, but instead of having star in the search bar, I, used, I swap star for best. Now I get all the best sellers for a given niche, which in this case is gifts for women. When I'm recording this, Mother's Day is in full swing, so there will probably be a lot of Mother's Day gifts stuff here. Let's see what products we can actually sell. We have t-shirts here, sweatshirts here. We have more sweatshirts here. We have this kind of thing, a jewelry box, another jewelry box. We have some candles, candles here. I saw a candle up here too, I think. Yep, another candle. So the candles looks like a great option to sell. Another candle. So soy candles in this case would be a great thing to sell on Etsy. Now we know which products are selling on Etsy. Now we gotta see if there's actually any margins that we can use. All of these are bestsellers. Yeah, let's just take this one, for instance. And then we head to Printify. We search for soy candle. There we go. I'll change this to USD. There's one print provider for this, which is Lumient. We'll check this one. So when we're doing this, in my opinion, if we're gonna sell, do this seriously, I highly recommend getting Printify Premium as the costs are a lot different and a lot better. That's to me is a no brainer. So 9.15 plus shipping. Shipping would be 8.79. Okay, so the cost is this. And these guys, they sell it for... Okay, so I live in Sweden, so this is a bit skewed. This includes VAT, uh, since I live in Sweden. So I ha first have to deduct that. Done. And then I have to take this and get how much this is in dollars. So I just write this, USD, sorry, two sec. So that's basically $15.79. That is definitely not profitable. Okay, we haven't included shipping there. So $15.79 for the product itself. Plus whatever they charge for shipping. Yes, this should be in the United States. I just write 9020 because of the, of the old series, if you remember that one. Okay, so $15.79, so the price is 99, that's this in sec, so 172.292 plus this, that's 271.5, so 24.95. Not big margins there, but definitely some margin. Let's see here if we can just take this and look at another product to just see if we can squeeze out some more margin. Let's look at this one. Mm -mm -mm. Remember, all of these on the page are best sellers, so they are selling currently. So these guys, they charge this, gotta deduct the AT plus shipping, which is 34.37. That's basically $30 instead for a birthday candle. And this looks really similar to the actual one that we're selling here like almost identical. So this may, might be a better one to base our price off of. So this is like $30 for a candle. I love candles myself, so I've paid $30 for candles just because I love those myself. So I don't think that's a bonkers price. And this is a much better margin. I always wanna look for a gross, this is a gross profit margin before ad costs, before refunds, before any mistakes have been made or and also before like income taxes and stuff like that. So this is a gross profit margin. I always want this to be at around 30 to 40%. So this is 
looks great. So now we know that a soy candle is a great product to sell on Etsy. Now, what we want to do is that with this specific type of candle, this one comes in different types of scents. And what we can do here is customize the front. So to know what to put on the candle, what we do here is that we just write soy candle for women with, I have to apply the filters again. Okay, let's see here. What we want to know here is just get a feeling of the types of designs that are actually selling. So we can write a list on what, what actually are selling on these types of candles. So we want a, basically a best selling elements list. Let's see here what types of design we have. All these are really simple to do. From experience, I know that custom listings always tend to have a higher conversion rate. So what I'll do here instead is just add a custom to it so we can get a sense of it. So this one is perfect. It's, a, it's just a cursive listing. And this is also a bestseller, don't forget that. With it just says your text here. So let's go to here write up our list and just write cursive because I think there are other this is just a simple simple text design this is a great niche to get into right now since it's that not that many people even in the actual niche itself from my other videos which I posted on my channel I've really shown that cursive is a great font to use and also a college font a great font to use if you want to watch those videos about how to design you can find that here I think it's here or here, but probably here. If you want to get specifically into how to design and just look into that exact process, I'd recommend checking that out. From that video, we learned that there's lots of t-shirts, there's lots of sweatshirts, there's lots of items overall that have a college font or a cursive font. So I'll just go ahead and write those up from the get, just based on those previous videos. If we just go back to the custom soil candle, List that we were in. We noticed that, that as I mentioned, that the bold stuff was doing super well. So we just write bold here as well. And also this type of listing, honestly. We do have some more cursive here. But yeah, bold stuff, basically. So just, let's, let's just keep it like this. Because a great way to actually get something new into a niche is to just take stuff from other niches. If a type of design sells super well on and sweatshirts, for instance, then it's a great way to actually just put that on a candle. That it has a high likelihood of actually selling on a candle as well. So we'll use those, but the bold one was really stood out here. So we'll definitely use that one as well and just mix all these up. Okay, now we know which best selling elements to use. It's the cursive and the college. And that's from research from previous videos that I mentioned. And now we know that the bold font is selling super well. So let's head here and let's just download a college font. Creative Fabrica is the site that I always use for all my stuff. There's a link in the description if you want to use it. But it's a great site for all the fonts and elements and stuff. Let's take this one. This one looks great. We'll download this one. It has a commercial license. So we need a commercial license at minimum, which basically just means that as long as we combine this element with another element, we can use it for commercial purposes. Now we need a bold font. Let's take this one. This one looks great. Commercial and full PD use it. Perfect. Now we need a cursive font. We'll use the Chica one. It's a great font that I also used in the video. So we have those three now. Let's head to Canva. We'll make a design, a custom design with 4500 by 5400. It's a great dimension that works super well with Amazon. So it works super well for Etsy too. So let's make a design. Let's take the bold one and let's take the college one because the college one is doing super good. You will need Canva Pro for this to upload this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd highly recommend getting that too, in my opinion. You can download transparent PNGs and stuff. Okay, now we have a varsity font. Now let's take the bold font. This one looks great. Let's take this one. Commercial usage, perfect. We need that. Let's upload it. It's the Boca. Let's take the heavy one. Do your text here because now we knew that from the previous video that the college design works super well and cursive design works super well from the previous video but we now we know that the bold design works super well for sword candles we want to combine the elements to make something new so now we have a curly college font and a bold font so i would just put these and just download that 
And now we have our first design. It's really important to take inspiration from other niches because we can see here that a lot of these are quite similar, especially if we just head to the best selling ones that I looked at before. We need to stand out and to make something out of Etsy. We need to bring value to the niche. And that means that we've got to add something new. So a great way to add value to a niche is to actually just take inspiration from other niches and apply it to a new niche. So in this case, we take inspirations from sweatshirts and we apply that on candles. And now we head into the mockups part. What we need to find here is to find similar mockups that are selling super well. And we need to find the similarities. So what we can see right off the bat is one thumbnail that works super well is this one with the lights around it. Kind of like my lights right here. But this one is doing super well, like one, two, three, four, five, six best sellers. So what we wanna do here is that we want to find these two. The mockup itself, like this one, is the one that works best. Let's find this exact mockup and use this as our thumbnail. So then it's soy candle mockup. Usually the best part about this is we have the, the exact mockups on Etsy. So usually we can find it itself, but we want to find this exact mockup and use that. Because the mockup itself is one of the most important parts of actually selling on Etsy, I can't stress that enough. So having the right mockup is super important. Okay, if we can't find one, like in this instance, that we can find the mockup, what do we do? We preferably is take this exact mockup. But one important thing to note here is that what we can see here, that's the main common denominator within all of these, except for this one, is that you can super easily actually see the design on the candle. So we need three mockups. This one is super clear. Let's take this one. Let's take, we want this one preferably, but we can find that one. This one is a bad one because it's really far away. So I would never use that one. This could be a good one. And this could be a good one. In the beginning, it's easy to get overwhelmed with Etsy. So I highly recommend just simplifying stuff. And we need three things in our listing. We need a site chart, we need a guarantee, and we need a thumbnail. So we need three mockups. So I would use this one, this one, and this one in this case just so we can have our all one separate picture for the whole offer so yeah now we have chosen our mockups the most important part of the offer is a great design so i can't emphasize that enough that no matter how much you you polish a turd for instance if it's a turd it's still a turd uh, as i mentioned before but that's why the design is the most important part so when we have a custom design that's actually selling then we know that we can scale that out to different niches and stuff. But the most important thing is to know that we got to test designs on a simple listing so we can know which design actually that works. Now we test this one with the college font and the bold font. What we could do instead of using this, we could use the Chica font and you do it like this and see if this combination of these three elements work. Or maybe it's the bold one that actually works here. So we change the cursive to bold. We need to try out different things, but the best way of doing it is just to make a custom listing like this. Because since both custom listings overall have a higher conversion rate and we don't have to be constrained by a niche, because the customer can write whatever they want. So it's, it's the fastest and the best way to, to, in my opinion, to grow business uh, now in 2024 and just to see what design works. Let's say that it's this design that works the best, then we can just scale it out to different niches. But the main thing in the beginning is to find the design that actually works with a simple offer just to get things going. The most important thing within this is just to get going instead of being holed up in planning or holed up in the small stuff. And when it comes to the offer, it should consist of a great design, like a size chart to know exactly how big it is, how small it is and so forth, and a guarantee. In the beginning, none of us have any reviews. And the guarantee takes a lot of risk off the customer and puts that back on the seller. But that if everything is set up correctly, it usually helps a lot with driving sales to our listings. Now, the last part about this is to make sure that when we list our items, that we list them at a break-even price. What I mean by break-even is having a small margin just to cover some ad costs and to cover any hiccups that have been made. And that's a two to four dollar range profit for each item sold. This one costs $17.94. We're looking for a two to four dollar margin. So let's take maybe $22 to low $24. This is perfect. So for this listing, in the beginning, when I would list them, I just list these at 
$24 with a guarantee. I'd also have ads on them to boost them because when we list something on Etsy, they go through a halo period where they're actually boosted in search. If we can boost that with ads too, it gives us a much higher likelihood of actually selling if everything's set up correct. But when we don't know which designs are actually selling, what it actually just gives us is a good way to fast track to know which designs are actually selling. So I'd recommend just spending $10 at maximum for each designs that we're testing. If that feels too much, then I'd drop that to five. Let the listing itself spend $5. And then if it's not sold by that amount, then just drop it off. And uh, that'd be my recommendation because it needs to spend some to try it out. But depending on those results, if it hasn't, sold anything by that amount, then I just turn it off and test a new one. A lot of this is just testing. When the listing has achieved like 10 to 15 sales or a 50% every B score, like for instance, if I go into this listing right here and analyze this listing, you have this visibility score here. So I'd recommend if it's 50% or more, or if it's around to 10 to 15 sales, if it has hit either of those targets, then I'd just put this up to profit pricing, which in this case, was this profit, 30.68. So basically you can then just take 30.99 instead for about a $10 profit almost. So then we bump it up through that. And the easiest way to do that is using a software called Bella. I've made a video about the previously two. All right, so we just made a full rundown of the whole process from research to listing. If anything felt unclear or so, just drop a comment down below